Welcome to Basement Tales with Sam Jackman, Charlie Einsman, Ed Grass, and Sandra Delancey. We have fun telling crazy but true stories about turning the worst possible property disasters into bags of money. Along the way, we'll pass along some important lessons to help you make cash on real estate. Sam and Charlie walked away from cubicle hell 25 years ago. Starting with no property, they created their own clear sky group of companies, sold hundreds of houses, bought dozens of rentals, and made millions in hard money loans. I'm Ed, a big firm litigator, until muscular dystrophy made me find a hobby other than suing people. I miss it. Sandra's the normal person here with a real job plus some rentals. Her decades of friendship with the group from office flunkies to property gurus might help keep us all humble and focused on learning something. I wouldn't count on it. So who's going to introduce Stacy? I first met Stacy five years ago. Is that right, Stacy? Yeah, it's been a while. We met at uh, Brittany's meetup called Heels and Deals Meetup. And that was one of the meetups where we were a hard money sponsor and uh, Stacy had been in real estate for a little bit. Um, and, and so we met uh, Stacy's married to a very nice gentleman named Mike. And so Stacy and Mike had, had been going to uh, Brittany's meetups. How long did you go there for about a year, year and a half? Yeah, it, 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 I originally met her through, Char you know, the Charles and Charles uh, Blair. Uh-huh. Through that yeah. group. Yeah. It'd been about a year or something like that. So we met, uh, uh, Stacy at, at a meetup a bunch of years ago. And so, you know, as we always do, we meet and greet beforehand and we each tell each other what we do, what we don't do. And so uh, we've established a hard money investor relationship with Stacy going on. I think our relationship is probably four years now, right? Three and a half, four years. Actually, I met you prior to her, but but we had never met in person. I, I, I where, was sending you. I was sending you deals. Mike and I, uh, we heard of you from through some friends, some mutual friends. Oh, okay. And, um, and so we had, been talking to you on the phone we never met you in person so it was pretty cool okay finally meet so you. so stacy's a native of maryland of maryland she has many years experience in real estate uh, she has a keen eye when it comes to finding quality investor homes to redevelop now stacy as you know that's the most important part of this business isn't it oh it really is <laughs> finding the properties and so stacy's pretty good that she became a full-time realtor investor when did you become full-time in this? I, I think it was four years ago. I fired my boss about four years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So four years from that, four years ago. Prior to that, she worked in the engineering field. She's got project management experience. Uh, she's a partner of MSA and Associates. Um, I believe your partner is your husband, Mike, isn't it? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's Mike. And so that's MSA and Associates. It's a, it's a veteran-owned real estate firm. She's also the co-owner of Prime Real Estate Investors Academy, All Things Realty, the Real Estate Factory, and is a board of RESA, which is a nonprofit that assists women for domestic violence. Now mm -hmm. we're gonna have to get into that later towards the end because I want to ask you some questions on that. Okay. Um, and so one of the one of the things that Stacy hasn't said is that uh, her Real Estate Investor Academy is is very successful, and she's had what do you have? Between 25 and 30 investors? Or yes, 20? I think it's about 27 now. Yeah. Oh, wow. So she's up to 27 students, and that's a very successful uh, endeavor. And, and the reason why I know that is because a lot of her students have come our way for, for hard money loans. So, Stacy, we want to welcome you to the podcast. And thanks for Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Stacy. Welcome, welcome Stacy. So, I saw Stacy yesterday <laughs> at a property on Allentown Road in Maryland. Stacy, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? that deal, that project that you're working on. Cause oh my it was God. like the living dead. When I got there, I got to the end of a gate past a <laughs> junkyard and I was just stopped. And there are these abandoned homes up the road. Oh, stop it. Stop it. So, so I acquired that property. I have a partner. He's with another firm, another brokerage. And whenever he's a part of a, a golf club or, or something, whenever people pass away, he gets these listings, but a lot of times they haven't kept up the homes or whatever. So in the last year, I picked up like three of them. So, I mean, it's sad to say, but when I'm running low on inventory, I call to see if anybody's passed away, you know, <laughs> and he kind of has these unique properties. And um, so he talked to me about this one, which was almost on four acres. It had three existing homes on it. And um, he wanted to see if I would, if I wanted to purchase it. We went out to look at it and the lady had like 22 cats living inside of the main home. 
and my husband is from Brooklyn and one of them touched him and it was over. He's like, I don't want any parts of it. It smelled terrible. He wanted to leave immediately. <laughs> and so I, I told the guy, you know, move on to the next investor <laughs> because he wanted 470 for it for one. And, and I knew at the 470 price point, you know, in the current condition of the homes, it just wasn't anything I wanted to touch at the time. Now, what was the what was the status of the other two houses at the time? I think one was oh, vacant and one was had a tenant in it. I don't remember. Yeah, one of them had a tenant in it, but it, it looked like no one lived there. And the other <laughs> one was the potty room for the cats when they left the house during the day because uh, they left the door cracked open and uh, it was shit everywhere. Uh, <laughs> no nice. pun intended. And so um, I have a youth group as well. So they do all my demo and trash outs. And I had to put those guys in hazmat suits. It was the worst thing well, we ever Well, they seen. were running some sex operations out of the back. Oh, my God, yeah. So a big trailer. <laughs> they had chained up people in there and all kinds of stuff. Oh, some crazy, yeah, some, some craziness going on. Um, so, so what we did is uh, we worked out a price, got it for $250 instead of $470. And I knew you guys moved really quick. And so what I do in order to beat out the other investors, I always tell them I'll close in one or two weeks. And if you can't close in two weeks, the deal's off. I kind of make them rush, rush the opportunity. And so we closed in two weeks and um, we ended up with eight 40 yard uh, containers full of crap. Wow. And um, maybe a quarter of that may have been um, sex toys and chains and all kinds of freaky things in there. And so some of my youngsters, they're like between 18 and 25. They're like, these people are disgusting. And I wanted to tell them so bad in 10 years, I want to revisit that conversation. <laughs> ten, years, 10 years, you should revisit in five years, right? So, oh, yeah, probably five years, yeah. Yeah, probably so we wonder the, why what? you got rid of all that good stuff. I know, right? Oh. Yeah, so one of the strategies for all you guys out there that Stacy did to purchase this property is that, remember, it was listed at 475. And what she did, uh, and, and so it had been on the market for a long time. I think it was on the market for 45 or 50 days, if I remember right. That's correct. And one of the things that she did to buy, remember, Stacy's also a licensed real estate agent as well. Are you a broker too or just an agent? No, just an agent. Okay. So she's a licensed real estate agent. But one of the smartest things that she did on this particular transaction is that she went directly through the listing agent. And that was a good move because I'm sure that helped you negotiate that price down to kind of where it made sense for you to buy, right? Oh, definitely. And and he he worked with me on prior deals and he knew we moved pretty fast. We had no hangups at the closing table and he knew I was able to produce. That's the important thing that if you write a check, you better make sure you can cash the check. That's the important thing. So Yeah, and that and that that property has a lot of upside. It can be converted into actually four rentals. One of them is a duplex rental and once it's cash flowing, she can refi out of it from us. And then beyond that, it has huge development potential. There's some very nice lot, lots and homes that adjoin it. So doing a, a redevelopment play, a subdivision play on that, it, it was, it's on public water, there's public sewer there. All she has to do is go through the process. It may take a few years, but she can go through a subdivision process. And it, in addition to that, the property is adjoined by a commercial space that's being used as industrial storage right now. And it's not entirely a clean storage lot, but, but were Stacy able to buy that lot and, and have, have an operating business there, or, you know, leasing out space and then have a subdivision play behind it. It's really a wonderful combination. Yeah, and I think it's 3.8 acres, Stacy. Yes, bought, it's right? 3.8 acres. Originally, so there are two businesses at the entrance when you're coming onto the lot. And all of that was originally a part of, of the whole plot, but they sold those off to those businesses up the block like several years ago. So as soon as we closed on it, the one owner who owns an auto shop came to me and told me the other guy wants to sell. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna go and pay him a visit. He owns another business down the street. So I'm definitely interested. If I could take it all over, I'm definitely interested in doing it. So you're clearly you're going to rename it Stacyville once you. Oh my God! Why? <laughs> why, why does one of the agents that uh, one of the students she says that she calls it Stacyville? Well, there you go. There well, you why go. don't you? Well, okay. Well, why don't you go over Stacyville and and tell us how you're going to do it? I think Sam alluded to one of the properties can be a duplex. So yes, yeah, so Aubrey. You got four rentals, right? 
Yeah, so I've already set it up uh, right now so that one of them, um, I have it designed right now as a duplex. And yes, so it's going to end up being four rentals right there already. So I should cash flow just under 5000 a month on that, on that okay, property. Okay, so, so just let's make it round numbers. 5000 a month for a property that you picked up at 250 right? She'll be, all, she'll be all in about 400 I'll be all in about 400 400 and then you have development potential and you're going to be getting a $5,000 a month free flowing cash flow minus a new a new debt service with a new lender so that should be a pretty nice positive cash flow for you right oh definitely definitely and you know for me whenever I buy and hold um, it's only if I can leverage the property if I see potential to cash out to use the the, the, the cash for something else or or if I see future development, in it like this one it's already been approved by the county for single fa family home division it so, has uh how many is it how many per acre four per acre two per acre no many? over there it doesn't have that limit oh really so actually you probably can do 10 houses over there oh that's great Good between 10 and 12 houses so so i came up with that idea you know as far as buying a hole once i became a grandmother you know my whole thing with that is you know future generations behind me so I'll buy uh, properties when I, when I first have the grandchild. I won't sell them to the end of the 11th grade year so that I can contribute to all of their education. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So well, that makes sense. If I not you. be smart, then, then uh, grandma will flip another house or something. Well, that, that'd be smart. That's smart because considering the fact that you also yeah. own a real estate investor academy, I mean, it's obvious that you're pretty high on education. And so that, that's a pretty good move. Oh, definitely. Now, now where are the three houses in, in relation to the actual land itself. Can you keep the three acres and then keep two and a half acres and subdivide that? Or, or do you got to knock oh, these could. houses down? Oh, definitely. I could, I could, I could end it and start it back or I, I could go back later and wipe them all out, I guess, and start over. Okay. So, so as an investor though, Stacy, what do you, how, how do you plan to kind of leverage the cash flow? How do you plan to like, you know, get the next, uh, I guess, loan once you leave these guys and right. they're hard money, how do you plan to kind of, you know, move to purchasing, you know, or, or, you know, moving to a conventional loan product, I guess, right. Right. and then purchasing more, you know, properties, you know, so from day one, when I first when I first viewed the property, the first thing I knew was that I needed to get them all up uh, to to um, current market value. So I knew the importance of that. Um, originally, let me tell you what my original thoughts uh, were, and, I, and I'm trying to still figure it out. But was to refinance the main house, just the main house, because the community to the right they're in the upper 300s. The community to the left they're between five and 600. Wow. So what I could do is just refinance that, subdivide the land and the other two houses away from the original loan. And what I could have done is own house two and three, clear and free and the land clear and free. That's a great strategy. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I thought about. And then the other thought was, uh, if not, I'll just bring them, regardless, I knew I had to bring them up to market value. So we'll bring them up to market value. So at the point that they have to come out and assess the true value of the property, all of them are in livable condition and they all have a schedule K because I knew that's the first thing they're going to ask is uh, to show proof, tax proof that, you know, we're receiving rental income. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I already so, had yeah. that up and, 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 you know, and the important thing for me is, is that we just keep it in the business name and do everything that we needed to do, you know, to keep it on the books. Yeah. And there, and there's two types of lenders that are out there right now for this property. Number one, um, you can once you get the properties cash flowing, uh, you you and you, you know you're receiving your four or forty five hundred five thousand bucks a month. The first loan that you could get right away from to to get out of our loan product is you can get a term and rate refinance, right? But then once you cash flow it for let's say six or seven months, then you can actually refinance with another type of lender where you'll be able to get a new stepped up appraisal and then get some cash out on that side. Uh, okay, wait, Charlie. Is, so go like, back to a term and rates. Uh, some I got some feedback. But sometimes Charlie uses terms that we don't understand. So a term and rate contract means what? Okay, so what a rate and term refinance means is that you're basically getting a better interest rate and a longer term. Okay. When you're in the hard money loan loan realm, 
usually the hard money loans range from maybe nine months to a year, year to a year and a half max. And so the hard money lenders kind of have a, they want you out at a certain time. And so right when the project is cash flowing, you really aren't eligible to get a cash out refi, you just get a rate and term. So your rate goes to much lower. Uh, right now it's probably four and a half, five percent And then you could probably term out at 25 to 30 years. Now, because the, the, the loan is in a LLC, I don't know that anybody's gonna give you a 30 year AM schedule. It's probably gonna be a 25 year AM schedule with five five year renewables. Now, mm -hmm. once you've owned it for six months and a day, you can then start to get it reappraised at a stepped up appraisal. So let's say for example, she's making 5,000 a month in rental income. Well, now what they're gonna do is they're gonna assess that property based on the three houses at a cash flow. So just off the top of my head, if you're doing 5,000 a month times that by 12, you're at $60,000 a month, divide that out by some taxes and insurance, you know, you're going to have an NOI of what's called 55,000 bucks a year. Yeah. So they'll, they'll, they'll easily income. give you a, what's called a, yeah. a, a 10 cap. So she could probably refinance it out at about $550,000 loan, get some cash out, get some lower interest rate. So now she's got the beauty of the cash flow. She's got cash out. She's got lower interest rate and a long-term product. So that's what I mean by a cash out refi. Okay. And, and that cash out refi, that would be uh, community banks tend to do some of that where what sort, you know, you wouldn't go to Citibank for that or, or um, whatever standard we, you would do for your own house. No, we, we would send her to a, a, bank, a bank like, uh, you can fill it in to help me out too, Stacey, but uh, Revere Bank, Capital Bank. I don't know if there's any smaller banks out by you in uh, Charles County or that part of PG County, but any kind of community bank out that area is a perfect play for this. Yeah, and I've done some um, some small things with uh, TBC, you know, where I've uh, refied out into a 10-year. I have one of my rentals in a 10-year uh, amortize with them, you know, and I think they came in at 7%, but that's before the rates got as good as they are now. Yeah. So what we're doing now- We're down to five and a half now. Uh -huh, down to five and a half. So what we're doing now is doing all of our homework, you know, so that we're ready ready to, to go. But I knew I needed to get those houses up to market value and that was the first thing I wanted to do. Right. And that was a smart move. And you know, the funny thing is, is let's just go back to the beginning of that transaction. I remember when you were looking at it at such a high price point, the 450, 470, I was like, oh God, please don't buy it at that high price. And then when you came back to us with that price point of 250, I was like, wow, dynamite. Um, but you know, even for us as as hard money guys, um, even though the tax assessment's like 428, I honestly had no idea how to evaluate that thing. Um, all I knew was, you know, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> so. So one of the problems, one of the big issues that I had with that property is that all of the houses were under one tax ID. Yeah. Yeah, sure. They all have their own addresses, though, through the postal system. Sure. So we actually may fall under and grandfather under our old rule. And I'm, it may be easier, mm -hmm. you know, than I thought to, to give them all their own tax ID. Yeah. Um, but I'm working on that. I, I'm, I'm right. going to. I'm working on that behind the scenes while still continuing to fix them because I know, again, the important thing will be, and I may do a pre-appraisal. That's something new I've been doing with my properties. I've what do you mean, a, what? What's I've that? Been doing an as-built as appraisal. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good way to do it too. Oh, yeah. What, what does the old tax ID have to do with you purchasing those properties? You're saying they fell under one tax ID, but oh, what, okay. what, is it, what does that mean to you? So meaning I couldn't refinance each house. So each house is worth right. something individually right. as right. well as- more, more as you, more as separate units than they are. Mm -hmm. Right, as but one. she can't do that until there are three different tax IDs. And so until they have three different- What she was talking about earlier, I think she mentioned the term, I think I heard you mention the term grandfathered use. So what's happening is that these three houses fall under one tax ID, mm -hmm. but because they've been there for such a long time, that. The, the characteristic of the zoning might only be one house per tax ID, but because these three houses have been there for a long time, she has what's called a grandfathered use of that property for three houses because it's been going on for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, if she were go to, to rezone it for one tax ID for three houses, they might turn her down, but she does have what's called an existing grandfathered use for the existing properties. So when you say tax ID, you're meaning that this, the county sees them as one property? Right, and so ID. her best bet is if she can get, get quickly get them shown as three properties. Got it. Okay. And if she can effectively subdivide it without going through a whole uh, process because of a 
grandfathered use and maybe some exceptions right. she can right. Right. In, a, right. in a more but, in a more liberal county that doesn't have a lot of bureaucracy they can do stuff like that. yeah correct however since she has longer term plans for the property and that she's talked about subdividing it and and getting she said 10 houses she might want to do all that at the same time yeah it doesn't no doubt, make no sense doubt. to go create three tax IDs because you might have an acre, acre, acre. You might as well go ahead and do the final site plan for all 10 houses at the same exact time mm -hmm. to include the three existing houses. And that will get her into a much better position. And so Absolutely. you might as well just do that all at once. Well, Stacy's okay. already got the water company out there doing a full plat <laughs> survey for free. So she, she's having like a $5,000 survey done with all the easements shown. By the water, by the water company. Yeah, the water company is doing it for free. We were about to get it done. So someone told me, call in and just tell them you don't know where your water lines are and have them come mark. And they were like, oh, we're in your neighborhood and we're, we're actually going to reach out to tell you we're going to do it for free. So we're just waiting for them to send us the, the drawings. I, I'm so excited about that to save well, money. Well, to quote, a, to quote a famous source, and I know you, you're a female, but I love you, man. <laughs> this is awesome you know this is great you know the funny thing about the whole thing is is you know this is why we're in business not only to see your successes but also to you know this is right up our alley you know any way we can help you out with any kind of development effort i mean that's perfect this is, this cool. is perfect. well so maybe you should switch and tell us a little bit about uh one of your other uh mm -hmm. projects and or maybe anita's project anita's oh project God, is, uh, ran into some trouble and and oh, I think that's a basement tale over there, the neighbor yeah. and all that. Okay, so one of the students and fellow uh, realtors, uh, Anita, Anita had a property she found it in Calvert County. I've already taught her how to deal with analyze. She was so excited. The numbers look too good. And I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. If it looks too good to be true, it is. Something's wrong. <laughs> but she found this property. I don't really mess around with Calvert County too much because I've heard bad things about the permitting there, so I don't yep. really mess around. Yep. And it's just too far to be driving every day. <laughs> Second up on it and everything. Well, she got the property and I supported her. And I think she picked that property up for, was it like 250, Charlie? Is that two? Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what it was for. I knew she it talked for, it down on it. Yeah, 250 and we gave her a loan for 320. Yeah, so, so the house was charming. It sat on almost an acre lot. It was a beautiful street, not far from the water. And it just seemed too good to be true. And then the day, uh, the academy, we always come out to support each other on demo day. We all wore our little prime shirts and we show up. And I see this old guy just looking with this mean face. And, um, and I said, something is not right with this guy. Next thing you know, he's out there writing down our tag numbers. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I said, hi, sir, Stacy McLennan. Here's my card. I'm the realtor here. I'm trying to pretend like I'm the realtor. What can I help you with? And I'm not going to lie to you. I just got this weird feeling. I think he thought Nita was moving in. And I think he thought she was. And I don't think he, he liked the thought that she may be moving in that community. And I, and I felt this weird feeling. And uh, what, one of our uh, agents husbands went to talk to him because the guy was getting angrier and angrier for no reason he's just out there mean right and uh so we get through the process and they keep on writing tag numbers down it was just getting it was getting real bad and then then they start telling anita that they're pissed no one told them the old man died so you know they were pissed about the neighbor dying and then it came out it was all about the recess wall he promised them a new recess wall the retaining wall Oh, yeah. retaining wall. Thank you. Yep. And then the day said, it's just a little four, three, not even a three foot wall, a foot and a half wall yeah. uh, of, of timbers that was supporting a little space between their land. Did they talk to so, you, Sam? Oh, no. But oh. They, they, they had a problem with the old neighbor, and the old neighbor had a restraining order against him. So she, he may not have liked to need a moving in, but he didn't like the old neighbor any more than he liked He didn't him. like any of them. Yeah. Right. Well, Sam. Well, Sam went out there a couple times. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he, he came out with that old mean face, looking at me and all that. Yeah. And he started looking at looking at Sam. And then one day I get a phone call. It's the strangest thing. And Anita's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, What? Well, the old lady is his wife fell. She came out and was talking to the guys working on a retaining wall. 
And Anita kept telling him, leave my workers alone. We have a permit. He's out there waving his hand and yelling at him. And the wife comes out and trips and breaks her, her teeth, her front teeth. Oh. And it was like a bloody mess. So Anita's <laughs> like, do I help her up? Hell no, Nita, you let her husband help her out. Don't you go on that property. No way. <laughs> Oh, you're no cool way. Here. You're tres you're trespassing. You hurt my wife. Oh, no. They went, Wait, so you ended up building the retaining wall that the they old guy was up. supposed to build? Yeah, because oh. they sued her. They sued. They, they sued, sued us, too. They sued Charlie and Sam. <laughs> uh, they yep. sued for like 200000 or 100000 It was a crazy number. It, 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 it was this a is like a, the whole wall. It might be a $5,000 wall. Every not part, even that. Not even that. Every part of it, you dug it out, put a brand new one in. But the one. biggest problem, yeah. I'll tell you what the biggest problem that silly lawsuit was. As a matter of fact, it came out close to COVID time, too. And she lost so, her contract over yeah, that. That's the biggest problem, is that she had a buyer, I think, within the first 10 or 20 days of the house being on the market. I think it was off in three days. It was, yeah. a, it was quick. Yeah. Oh, it was a beautiful house and she did everything. She put a new septic field in and the but county to... out there put in the septic tank. And but, but Sam. It was so crazy. The neighbor called the police because she didn't have, the county didn't seed over the septic tank. Oh my God. This but guy called the police on Anita and they ended up getting in trouble with the police. The police threatened yeah. to lock them up because they were on Anita's property and it was a it was already a, a, a order against them for coming yeah. over there. Yep. You know, the last two weeks before closing, a tree fell. A tree fell on the lot and it fell over in their yard. Ugh. And I just was too through. I said, poor Anita. Anita, I think she might have lost 20 pounds during this process. It was bad. Yeah, poor Anita. She was, the, she the, said Anita, nice. Anita, the Anita boo came out. Yeah, yeah, it's she not said, Anita she, Boo. So it's she said she's from Chicago or something. She's from Ohio. And, Ohio. And she's a person. Gonna... And, and by the way, Anita is like 64 years old, right? So she's retired in a new career. And and we we named her Nina Boo because this tiger came out of her. And I was so proud of her for standing her ground, you know, and not playing around with these people. But but they really broke her down. I sat in on those meetings. I feel bad because I had to tell the man to shut up. And I don't tell people to shut up in a business, you know, atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. This guy told, no, he told me to shut up. And I told him, I said, I'm 50 years old. You don't tell me to shut up. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so we, and so we had to help you guys or help her through the legal process a little oh bit. My the, God. Numbers, the numbers still worked out okay. Uh, oh, yeah. She bought it for 255 She sold it for about 470 Yes, yeah, so that's So correct. she had about $75,000 of renovations. The only problem with the lawsuit was she would have made a lot more money, but the lawsuit literally cost her six or seven months of holding costs. She probably would have had a six figure return on that. Yes. Property, right. And I was rooting for it. I yep. wanted her to win, but there was just no way around yep. that lawsuit. It yeah. So she probably went from a hundred thousand or $120,000 profit. Oh, my I think God. she still profited 75 to 80 grand if I recall. Right. Right. The only, the only difference is, is her, her, uh, her terrible lender uh, ended up getting a little bit more money because we got a lot more holding costs. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, the, big, the, big, the big lesson that, that comes out of this, I, I saw Sam do this, and I'm not saying Anita had this opportunity, but, but somehow getting to be friendly with the neighbors, I, this made me think of uh, Blaine Street where on the townhouse, you guys needed to do the roof and there's no easy way to connect the new roof to the other crappy roofs next to it. And so you went to both people and just said, hey, we'll do your roof for you. And I remember you, there was another issue with the porches connecting yeah. and you just communicated them. They, 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 you like walked on water with those people. Yeah. They yeah, wanted yeah, to do yeah, anything. One of them they, was sort of a difficult person. She had, uh, you know, lived on her own as she was elderly and had, had a lot of concerns about like a can of paint and this and that. Well, right. Yeah, and even for us, uh, Stacy and, and Sandra, the, uh, Blaine Street was a interior row home in Lily Ponds. And so it wasn't like you have a big single family house mm -hmm. out there in Calvert County where you don't even think about talking to your neighbors. One of the things that we learned in DC is that, you know, especially if we're going to do an interior road house or even an end unit row house, we've got to at least not only be friendly with our neighbors, but kind of get to know them. And, it, and there was a couple other instances too where 
we've had to use our crews. Uh, uh, Rittenhouse comes to mind and a oh, couple yeah. other properties that we've had in DC where we've had to actually use our contractors to go over there and help do work for our next door neighbors just to kind of you know, fire the shot over the bow kind of saying, look, we're friendly guys. We mean you no harm. Matter of fact, we're just trying to increase the values of, of, of your neighborhood. And so that works yeah. out pretty good. Yeah, well, well like we, in a, that situation with poor Anita, if this other person realized, you know, up front, again, I don't know, it doesn't sound like she could have no. made it happen. But if they knew she was going to do the retaining wall and they think that other guy they didn't like is gone, it's going to be a beautiful renovated home, you would think a normal person would be cooperative. Now, unfortunately, people in, in their land get very worked up. And Sam knows the property I'm talking about with that. Oh, but, yeah. you know, as they oh, say, yeah. you can get more with sweet than bitter. Unfortunately, sometimes the bitter comes no matter what you do. Yeah, it does. It does. It so yeah, like she, she really tried. She tried communicating with them, but they wanted to choose the contractor. They wanted to choose the oh. design for the wall. And um, it was just going over and beyond. So finally, she allowed them to, to select the contractor. We went with them. We went with it. And do you know, she got a call about three weeks ago. Now, the house has been gone for several months since October. But she got a call and they're asking, can she pitch a few more dollars because they tried to change it again? And I held her hand and told her, absolutely not. We did our part. You no well, longer own it. It's over. Well, you could quote me on this for your future engagements. My line is, never will happen first. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Never will happen first. I don't know. You guys are pretty good about throwing money at something to smooth so yeah. to smooth it over. So that's why I thought yeah. the story was going at first, that you were just going to come in, Sam said, by the retaining wall, and, you know, it was going to be nice, and you're going to move on. But you know, uh, It's it a little bit of there. a tough lesson, right? Because when you're confronted with a person who's difficult and the retaining wall doesn't need to be done, and you're thinking it's $5,000, you're thinking they could, just, they could just go away, and you're not going to bother with that. But you really have to consider what, like the total potential number of problems yeah. that they can generate for you. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you're looking at Anita's situation, she, it was a, say a $30,000 problem that they generated for her, plus a lot of personal aggravation. You know, she, she in that situation might, have, in the future, if she were to happen again, say, okay, what we're gonna do right up front is you're gonna get a contractor, we're gonna have this wall replaced to your satisfaction and we're going to go to closing or we'll give you a concession at closing but we can't right. make you unhappy we want to really make you happy right. you well, sort that's, of like that's true too. so sometimes you, you got to say no but sometimes you just recognize the risk factor yeah. and the litigious nature of the person yeah yeah and that's the other thing too is when they see you pull up for the first time uh they 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 probably have an idea okay well you're going to buy the house cheap you're going to fix and flip it you're going to make a ton of money so yeah. already, already, even though this might have been Anita's first or second flip, I don't know. They just assume that mm -hmm. you have money. Yeah. And so yeah. they see a potential for a money grab, a la our friend in Washington, D.C. You know, yeah. the money grab comes out. And so you just oh, have yeah. to do the best you can and be the nice guy and err on the side of being nice, which I know for me is hard to say because I struggle to do yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a problem. To bring and my up. lawyer buddy Ed has to keep me straight all the time, but you, you got to err on the side of caution. Like Ed said, you got to take the suit. I don't know why winner. people assume all investors have a lot of money. They do. I can tell some family members, listen, we have a lot of assets, but if you're a smart investor, no one keeps too much liquid sitting around because we don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> That's it. And we don't well, want well, you asking for it. And it's frustrating like that, like that retaining <laughs> That retaining wall, you know, that's $5,000 you shouldn't have to spend. And you're doing all this work. And as Sam said, you got to sort of choke down your pride. And again, not saying she, she wouldn't have. And say, you know, the odds are I'm going to pay $30,000 or, or some terrible amount of money and headache to, to prove I'm right. Maybe it's better to just toss the $5,000. And, and it, it's sad. You're like, there goes $5,000 of pure profit. Well, that's right off the top line. Yes. Well, no, but, that would have been that would have been beautiful if it mm -hmm. would have happened at the very beginning. Right. The problem was well, these guys were asking reason. for like a hundred, hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in a lawsuit, and they and they wouldn't even talk to you. They wouldn't even right. they wouldn't even have a conversation. <clears throat> they were just the worst. I mean, I really think they were after money. I really do. Oh yeah, no doubt yeah. about it. No oh yeah.
They, they, Who's driving them? Do you think there was a lawyer or something behind them driving, or do you think that was just their plain old ignorance that they could get a hundred thousand dollars out of you? Because that's a lot of money to a you know retaining wall. You know, even after the retaining wall was up, he measured it and said it was a half an inch over his property line. Well, I, I've seen that before. He money. Yeah. Well, I've oh, yeah. seen yeah. half inch before. Oh yeah. yeah. Over the line. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We mm -hmm. got a we got a we got a potential. Uh, Suit coming up on on an encroach on an encroachment issue of a property that we own. We got a half incher. Uh huh. We got a half incher, baby. On, on happier things, one thing I heard Stacy say that I way back at the beginning, which I thought was interesting. It sounds like that the Stacyville, um, you saw that sort of through normal processes. You saw it listed normally, but then you just hung on and kept watching it and watching it, and it takes time and effort. But if you work harder than the next person and if finally they they get sick of it or a bank's got a short sale or if you're there at the right time, you can get the, you know, and you might have to do that on 10 properties to get one, but that one is worth the time on all 10. I, so I that, agree. I agree. And I think once they see that you're able to deliver it, like with the prior property Gates Drive, I got from the same guy. Yeah. I think I think they're more likely to call you. They know that their yeah. their client may be desperate for the money. Yeah. They own the property mm -hmm. outright, but they didn't maintain it. They knew yeah. a regular purchase, a regular buyer couldn't. They would eat that up in a home inspection yeah. and 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 the appraisal because once they walked the property and saw the whole farm of uh, cats, it just do you know they they trapped those cats and took them with them. There was one yesterday. I saw one yesterday. Yeah, it's up one got away. So that's why only 22 went with them. This 23rd one <laughs> still lives there. Wow. Well, but, and this also, this also talks about reputation, right? Yes. So, yep. so word gets around, yep. you know, you, you didn't cause trouble at closing by nickel and diming something and you showed up and you said, I'm going to do X and you did X and and they're going to think of you the next time because everybody else is busy and tired and whatever. And if they know, if I call Stacy, this is going to go smoothly and you, you get that call. So, and sometimes you spend that $5,000 when oh, yeah. say you, to do that, to get that reputation. I mean, and not only that, just having the lender that supports you and they can see your vision with it, because I know some other investors, they get to the closing table and their lenders drop the ball. Oh, a lot. And that's embarrassing, especially the amount of EMD you have to put down as an investor. Like that's that's really embarrassing. It's some people we know too, Charlie. Yeah, so, yeah. We, know. Yep. we know friends of ours. Probably. Well, why, don't, why, ours why, why don't we segue into one more property? Uh, let's let's tell another story on another one of your properties. And the one that I'm looking at is uh, Westwood Road. Yeah. Let's talk about Westwood Road. That's the one with the pool. Yes. Yeah, and the exit strategy is a little bit different than Allentown, but it does have a little developer flair in it, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Right, so, so Westwood Road, I've been holding on to it longer than normal because I also saw development opportunity there. Same guy called me with this unbelievable deal. He had a Cape Cod sitting in Brandywine on 19.1 acres. And uh, the going price, I believe it was 225 or 230. And um, so the first thing I started doing was checking uh, to see, oh, can we do a subdivide on here? And about 0.2 miles up the road, Caruso was putting brand new um, uh, colonials up there. And I think that they were starting in the low fives or something. And I said, bingo, got one. But I knew that it was also rated SS, which meant you had to keep five acres for every house. Yeah. Also um, the topography, it was pretty hilly. It was pretty hilly, but so are the Caruso's. They all have a drop. Yeah, but you're on, but you're on 19.1 acres, right? on 19.1 acres. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I started, that was a full gut. It needed everything from um, the everything. floor to, <laughs> it needed everything. to the kitchen sink. It needed everything. It was a hundred thousand dollar reno on it. But, but, but this one was deeper than, it was just deeper than just that house. I saw potential in the land as well. But I knew the first thing I had to do was get that, uh, I always say the name wrong. Uh, the land survey. It yeah. was uh, yeah. what's that? Get the plat. I had to get. I had. I knew I had to get that in order to to subdivide it or do anything to it. Yeah. And um, on 19 acres. Yeah. It's a lot. Five but, big ones. Did it cost you five big ones? Yeah, it cost five me five grand. 
Yeah, it costs a little more than that because you know mm -hmm. you gotta identify the type of tree. He had to collect leaves, and I didn't know all of this stuff goes into this. You know, and there was a lot going on with this uh, this property and firing people. I don't know why people don't want to work during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that's another, topic for another. That's another year, one. Yeah. Well, year, outside God. on five acres or 19 acres, I think you could work outside and that. Then that's oh my God. He, I had a weird guy come up there and he told us he used to live there and there are ghosts living in there. Oh, he, wow. But he could tell us every room in the house. Like you could tell he'd been in the house before. I don't know the ghost, but I didn't see him. Thank God. So, was yeah. he a ghost maybe the guy you were talking to <laughs> yeah he could have been a ghost uh -huh. he was a friendly ghost oh that's good <laughs> we threw him a beer he was happy so we were good but um the the land guy he took us took michael because i'm not messing around I, i've seen enough wild snakes out there i didn't go but mike went on a walk and there was a second entrance to the property with barns back there and all kinds of stuff oh i didn't even see that you, no, you only if Mike takes you back there. It's like a walk. It takes <laughs> over an hour to walk the land over yeah, there. Stacy's not going there, Sam. Oh no, mm -hmm. oh no. Once, once send I send a photograph. <laughs> send Mike. Send, send Mike. But, How did you find I, out about that one? Uh, I, I got that from the same, um, the same realtor guy. Mm -hmm. the kid, I call him the kid because he's like twenty six, but this guy's so innovative and exciting. He comes up That's with nice. some really good ones. So he's the one who's in the golf club. He's the one in the golf club, and, mm. and but you know this was a sad story though because guy passed away. He did. It was an investment property for this guy. Guy passes away. He owned it for several years. Remarried. Forgot to take the ex-wife off the property. Oh no. So he dies, and the ex-wife gets this land and the property, ah. and she just wants to off it. She just wants money. So uh, yeah. he said, "How much?" I'm like, two twenty. And um, and he's and he's like, you got it, two twenty five, and we ship on it, and uh, before COVID, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we ship on it, but I'm not gonna lie. When I first went up that hill, uh, Sam, you've been to that property. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, it you was terrible. up the it's hill. All... It's like, where the hell are we going right now? Yeah, it's remote, and the house was terrible. <clears throat> well, yes. and it's th this is another good lesson, and you sound, Stacy, like you you have this side of it is. I've, I've learned from watching these guys, sometimes the absolute worst mess is the best possible thing to buy yeah. because any retail buyer is going to look at it and be like, I'm, I'm not going and living there. I'm not yeah, doing no that way. work. Or you think, oh, this, this hill is not very good or the view is not very, mm -hmm. well, if that's reflected in the price, you get yourself a heck of a bargain and you can end up doing all, it may look beautiful by the time I you're just, done. I just had the pre-appraisal done. Just had the pre-appraisal done on this. I just got it back yesterday. I'm pretty excited. All right, what's it. the number? Come on, give me a number. 445. I love you, man. There you go. There you go. I love you. I love you, woman. I love because, you, woman. That's great. Because, you know, and people were telling me to knock the decks down, right? Uh, and, one of them's on the phone here. I, and they were like, knock boom. those old decks down. And we, I did. We replaced the boards and we re like solid stain on them. Yeah, it looked so good. Huh? We got we we got uh three decks and a custom pool so now we have four bedrooms with a master on the main level three full baths one half bath hardwoods throughout you know and, you know so they, wait a minute so hold on wait a minute wait a minute so are you just going to sell that house with, with the entire property or with five acres so wait a minute so you just subdivided that house on five acres yeah you're going to sell that and then you're going to own another 14.1 free and clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Then I'm now, do you have plans for the 14.1? Because you're going to have to have roads and things that go in there. And I'm sure it has to use the same, you know, access well, we roads. To, so, so yeah. So the other entrance can um, enter into the, the, the way that the new entrance will come. So that's the first thing I told the guy is, listen, don't get all pretty with the drawing. Just carved them out five acres. As <laughs> long as we can enter, you know, from another angle, then we'll do that. But the one thing, um, the one thing he did, you know, he got it in just in time because once the leaves go, that would have, we would have had to wait to the spring. Yeah, but you're going to run into a minor issue. What is that? You have, remember, you have 14.1 acres. You're going to have to apply for a variance to get three houses on 14 when the buy right is three houses on 15. That's correct. So you're going to have to do something. 
around our area called a variance. I'm not exactly what they're going to call it. It'd be That's tough around right. us, but out there, I think they'll speak. Out there, they should be able to do it. They won't it's, even call, it's called a variance. Um, yeah. And the cool thing is one of my students, he has a, a very good partner who's in the county, uh, one of the county councilmen. And he's already talked to him. We had to be willing to give them something. And so um, right. not to be illegal, of course. No, it's proper. But, so right. like a, a play area, sure. um, um, uh, uh, I think two feet of road widening Westwood okay. in those areas. So we already started. So we already started uh, writing up our proposal and they're gonna, they're planning to have a meeting with us. And so, you know, of course we're playing off the fact that we're a small veteran owned minority business and uh, right now they want to do more business with some of the smaller development companies. Good. So I'm planning to call Charlie and Sam like the day yep. after we close on the on the Cape Cod <laughs> and already, you know, get get some other plans. We talked to Timberlake. Do you know how good their investor packages are to let Timberlake just do the whole thing? Up to 3,300 square feet, 260. Wow. That's delivered. Oh, you mean to, to build it? Yes. Oh, oh, so okay. So you're not you're not going to get a a three lot three lot site plan and sell it. You plan to develop those other three. I lots. would like to. I would like wow. to if if I can get the opportunity to, to to do it, and especially in that price range. Oh yeah, that's um, great. At, you know why wouldn't I do that? But he's saying he may grant an exception where I won't have to do five acres per house. Oh, good. So we're yeah. going to talk about that a little more. So one of the things that I'm telling him also is that we'll make it cheaper than Caruso Homes to make it more affordable for the oh. average middle to upper middle income family. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell yeah, you. Yeah, they definitely, this is exact. You, you're exactly right because they have a lot of power, the zoning authorities. Oh, yeah. And so if you can go to them and say, look, the idea of the five acre per lot is so that people are separated. Well, the way this is laid out, no harm, no foul. Yeah. It's going to look like everybody's got six acres or visually. So, mm -hmm. but in return for giving us the variance, I think you said, we'll widen the road or you can, you can put a electric pole on or whatever the, because usually the county has a bunch of stuff they'd like to do all oh, yeah. the counties. And so then, then they feel good for the variance and, and everybody walks away happy. Yeah. You know? right. So what yeah. was the number? The numbers you were using there for the construction again? So I, I believe we purchased that two. What's it, Michael? Two twenty five. Two twenty five. Two thirty. Two yeah. twenty five or two thirty. We 230. did hundred thousand on the. Exact. Yep, two thirty. Reno. Uh, no, I'm back. I'm back to the numbers that you were saying about adding when you wanted to do development. The build. She, he's talking about the builder. You right. said. Uh, builder. You said thirty three hundred square foot house for two hundred sixty thousand. Oh, 3,300. Yes, up to so 30. For 260. So he'll do it oh, at seven. I'm sorry. Up to 3,300. Uh, yeah, square feet, 269. Yeah, but that's incredible because but our that rule does of thumb, not include all of the land prep. But if we're. No, no, no. We understand. But it's but 81, $81 a foot. You're right. So, right. So how, where will this person build? Will they build? How close will they build to, to, the, to the district? And will they build in the district? Can I knock this one down and start over? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Sandra, you, you, you're running 150 a square foot for the mansion and the finish. Uh, 350. You want. Over there they ain't getting at that at 81 bucks. As a matter of fact, Tracy said a square foot over there. up to 3,300 square feet for 260. Nah, your finishes, you want the Taj Mahal. That's the 350 stuff. Oh, yeah. But she, $81 a square foot is great. That is. No, it's great because Stacy, because, you know, for us, just a simple, you know, back of the napkin math for us. If you're doing a hundred dollars a square foot, that's oh, that's dynamite. unbelievable. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so a thirty-three hundred square foot house, we just priced it out at three hundred thirty thousand just for the sticks and bricks, not including the land development, not including the engineering, not including any of that stuff. We're just talking sticks and bricks. So if you're talking eighty-one dollars a square foot, oh my goodness gracious! Let's yeah, actually, Michael oh. went. I can't get him to come on camera. <laughs> ah, he won't come on, huh? He won't come on, but but Michael actually went to their office and sat there. We've been in in the talks with them for the last year, and um, they have a very good. There are several builders, some of the larger companies that have uh, investor packages. Oh, good. Yeah, so that I thought that was real reasonable. I mean, probably. Now is that is that a package deal, though? Do you have to like you know develop you know four properties to get that price, or you know? Probably. No. It wasn't no. like that. And, no. and the cool thing, this gives an opportunity to Prime as a brokerage yeah. to take on, you know, 
a new construction and yep. they give you the whole packet where you, you know how you, you go to visit the new built and yep. inside of the model home, you add the, they can do you the can upgrade. Your, yeah. You have the ability to show your client right That's on the nice. spot. So my plan is to, as soon as land prep is done, to start taking deposits on lots. And, pick, um, your, pick your own amenities, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to try to sell it out, you know, ahead mm -hmm. of the bill. So that's well, that's a, that people love that to have a new home and to have some control over the finishes. You definitely mm -hmm. get a premium price for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you've mentioned Prime a few times. You want to talk about Prime, and you yes, know now, now yes. that you're going to become a land developer, it looks like you're growing <laughs> from education to something else. So, so Prime Residential is the brokerage that I work for. Me and my broker Garland Dabner, hey Garland, we're business partners on the Real Estate Investment Academy side. I met him at an event and um, it was like love at first sight and my husband allows it. No. I love you, Mike. <laughs> Business Man. love. All right, Mike. Business love is a special love. But, but <laughs> this, guy was a, this guy was a redeveloper and he used the word redevelopment. I hate the term flip. And he was a flipper, a redeveloper, just like me. And we, we were, I mean, it literally was like the perfect fit. And he was developing a program for his agents to learn how to redevelop. And I, I was already mentoring people, just regular day-to-day -day people who are looking to generate extra income. And we kind of put our programs together and the three of us became partners. So I guess we're in a situation ship. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is one other question I wanted to ask you from way back at the beginning. Okay. With Sam and Charlie as, as agents, and because we were probably getting a little long now, but although it's been fantastic. But Sam and Charlie as an agent and a broker, save so much money on buying properties and selling properties and it's saying you have all the you help learn some of the terms we've been doing how hard is it to how hard was it for you to get your agent license um i and th these guys are probably longer ago but how, you know what does it take to get that done because it seems like if you want to be in real estate it's a great asset to have so it's not hard to get your uh, real estate license, but I was nervous to get it, to be honest with you, because there are things that I can do as an investor. There are conversations that I have that as an agent, I may not have been able to have or vice versa, but huh. I can do certain things, especially in short sales and stuff yeah. as an agent that I couldn't do in talking to a person losing their home or going into foreclosure as an investor. So I always originally played off my husband, who's not licensed, and he did a lot of the talking when I couldn't. But the best thing I did was become a real estate agent. I run that off of my All Things Realty LLC. I take all my commission under LLC. And I do take commission off my projects because that way I can, you know, I, I take an income that way instead sure. of taking an income yeah. from MSA. I don't, take, I don't take an income. We just keep reinvesting. So that keeps me going. And Michael's working on his second, his second retirement. So, and, and running MSA. Well, I have to say, um, I'm very proud of you guys just to Thank see you, your Charlie. growth in these last few years. And I also want to give a shout out to Garland as well, just because the broker model that you guys are doing has got to be one of those broker models that people have got to follow. I because agree. most of these brokers just want to take these agents. They want to churn and burn them. They want to just have them try and make their commissions. They do not want to teach them the investing side of the game, how to make extra money fix and flipping, how to make extra money buy and holding, how to make extra money developing. And I think what you guys are doing out there in the real estate community, your agent should be very proud to be part of, a, of your brokerage. And like I said, I want to shout Thank out to you, you and Charlie. Garland. Yeah, I love Garland. Very forward thinking. Yeah, I, I think, and I always tell agents, if you're an agent and not an investor, then you're you're out of your mind. I mean, right. every agent makes between forty and 50000 a year, whether people know it or not. If they redevelop one project a year, it's clearly putting them in a six-figure category. Yeah. And if they, if they're, if they're, they're seeing an inventory before the world does. So, and you're yeah. meeting the people who do, who do REOs on a yeah. daily basis. Yeah. No question. But you have these, you have these brokerages who tell you that, Wholesaling is illegal. They 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 keep 30, 40 percent of the commission. You know, where our like our brokerage, we only do a 90 10 split. You know, the yeah. he he would rather you take take your money and and redevelop 
I mean, and put it back into your business and yeah, and, well, and um and do well with your brand. So I love right. that. I love that he does that. It's great. It's it's you know it's very forward thinking because you know you read all these national stories and they're all like, oh, you know, the real estate brokerage business is a dying breed. You got Redfin, you got Zillow, you know, you got all these people trying to take it over. But what they don't realize is that you guys have got the perfect residential brokerage model. Because as long as you're teaching your agents to not only be good agents, but also to be good investors and that you're going to help them try and build generational wealth or even try and make a little bit extra money outside their commission stream, that is such so, so forward thinking. And, and I don't care what the economy is going to do. I don't care what anything happens. That's going to end up winning the day. So again, I want to shout out to you and Garland Thank for that you, very Garland. proactive approach. And it's fun working with you. You have great projects. Yeah. Uh, you Thank know, you. Sam. Really enjoyed it. We love you guys, and especially you two together are are funny. Uh, I love sending people to Charlie. They call me back. They don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> he tells them the real truth. They he don't know them, what to he do. He gives them the real truth up front. Oh, 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 but one more thing. So all of our agents, we, we encourage them to get their LLCs, right? The first thing I tell them, get your LLC. You know, 80% of them qualify, you know, when the business slowed down, and they had no business coming in, but they had made business at the early of the year. All of them qualified for something that helped push them through this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's, that's the nice. important thing about being smart in what you do. Yeah. But but Charlie, here's your funny story about about your guy Sam. I took him in house number three over there on Allentown Road. Mm -hmm. He walks in and puts his hands up like this. Listen, I've been to this party before. I've seen it before and I'm I'm good. I don't need to go any further. <laughs> it smells so bad in there. Uh, whoa. In order for Sam to have smelled it, it must have been terrible because he can't smell. It was oh, sense of smell is terrible. It was, it was pretty rough in there. It was rough. Oh Sam looked around. He said, yeah, the price you said to fix this is about right. He just walks back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was and he crazy. probably also had a mask on at that too. Oh, and yeah. he had on a mask. It's really, <laughs> it's really bad. Like these. Oh, that's I mean, funny. That issue was like out of control. I had to get the vent. I couldn't even keep the vents, and I couldn't keep any subfloors. <laughs> well, thanks <laughs> so really, much for for joining us today. Thank you. And I was gonna say, you know, I really appreciate you guys for supporting us. You know, first me and Michael because it's been several years, like you said before, Charlie. Yeah. And you know, even when I just wasn't sure, and I and I just needed to hear you to to, to um, lend your ear to me. You've been so supportive through the process. And when any of our students had problems, I appreciate you. And I like that you don't, you don't sweeten them up. You know, you just hit them hard because they shouldn't. And I always tell them, if you don't know the ARV, if you don't know the comps in the area, they don't know about you, Sam, that you're able to pull like you guys have all the resources. Yeah. So they can't just hype. You know how some of the whole, right. they're like, yeah. the sell for 500 we're looking at comps 335 max yeah. that, by the way but well, i'm telling them you better know those numbers before you call that number <laughs> yeah that's right well you know for us stace and you know how it is is that it's a handshake business mm -hmm. we're going to make our money in the story but it's more important for you guys to make your money because if you don't make your money i'm not going to see you again yeah and so we, we just that's believe that we want to see you 50 60 70 times we wanted to see you once Thank you so much, Stacey. It's great to great to meet you. I'll have to have you on for a part two sometime soon. Yeah. Yeah, we need to find out what happened with the Stacyville. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, yeah, right. When you're the mayor of Stacyville, definitely give us a call so we can have you back on. <laughs> <laughs>